Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's my privilege to rise in this House and join my colleagues in the official opposition in opposing this bill. Mr. Speaker, normally I do not read a speech, but I find that it's very important on this bill to be clear that I am conveying the actual words of medical specialists, including those from uh, my city of Edmonton, from the Canadian Medical Association, and from the Supreme Court of Canada. In reintroducing Bill C-2, an act to amend the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act, the government is flying in the face of credible, strong evidence that safe injection sites lead to improvements in public health and public safety. The specific objective of organized, supervised safe injection sites is widely recognized to improve health outcomes and to reduce impacts to communities where drug use is already occurring. And it's important to recognize that drug use is occurring. Bill C-2, in imposing 24 conditions to the operation of any safe injection site, and then completely giving the discretion for the minister to ignore that advice and impose her decision, rather than the opinions of scientists and medical experts, with a clear intent of rendering them inoperative. The intent of a safe injection program is to directly address the problem of addictions to dangerous and illegal substances by mitigating the negative effects of such addictions while ensuring that addicts have access to support when they are ready to begin treatment to get off drugs. And it's important to emphasize that is clearly the path that we support and that is the path of the safe injection sites. Safe injection sites have been proven to do both of these things. The Canadian Medical Association, Mr. Speaker, has expressed deep concern about this legislation. It's pointed out that there is overwhelming clinical evidence to show that safe injection sites save lives and has called for such facilities to be included in a national drug strategy. According to the CMA, and this is in quotes, supervised injection programs are an important harm reduction strategy. Harm reduction is a central pillar in a comprehensive public health approach to disease prevention and health promotion. In a preliminary assessment based on initial review of the bill, the CMA is deeply concerned that the proposed legislation may be creating unnecessary obstacles and burdens that could ultimately deter creation of more injection sites. The CMA president, Dr. Hagee, then president, in response to the unanimous decision of the Supreme Court of Canada said, and again in quotes, while for some this is an ideological issue, for physicians it's about the autonomy to make medical decisions based on evidence, and the evidence shows that supervised injection reduces the spread of infectious diseases and the incidence of overdose and death, end of quotes. Dr. Stan Houston is a professor and specialist in infectious diseases at the University of Alberta, and he has extensive experience working with HIV patient care and organizations assisting such patients. Dr. Houston has expressed support for the operation of safe injection sites for a number of important health-related reasons. According to Dr. Houston, in quotes, although exact numbers are difficult to determine, hepatitis C infection rates run rampant through intravenous drug users, and at one point, more than 80% of those users were found infected, end of quotes. He has advised that due to needle exchanges and other social services provided by Streetworks, an Edmonton support program, the rates of HIV and hepatitis C have declined. According to Dr. Houston, again in quotes, HIV cases are steadily going down in drug users in Edmonton. In fact, that's our biggest HIV prevention success story. HIV rates are going up in other risk groups, but they're going down in injection drug users, and harm reduction practices should get a large part of the credit." End of quotes. He shared that in providing a safe, supervised location for injection staffed by medically qualified people, the probability of engaging drug users in drug treatment is substantially enhanced. He shared that the preponderance of evidence from 25 peer-reviewed reports shows that determined determines that programs such as Insight improve rates of further uh, treatment for addictions. Dr. Houston has advised me that to his knowledge, not one case of drug overdose has occurred at Insight since 2003. That, that is a lot of lives saved, lives that can be redeemed and supported than to end addictions. 
Mr. Speaker, should that not be the health objective? As Dr. Houston pointed out to me, those who operate safe injection sites are not pro-drug use. Quite the opposite. Surely it's better to have addicts injecting drugs in a clean, secure place instead of back alleys. Quite logically, a preferable alternative to ensure public safety. He's also called for more government funding of drug treatment facilities to help end um, their addictions. Dr. Houston points out that the research supports his position. The obvious question then is, Mr. Speaker, why isn't this government willing to take the advice of Canadians' doctors when it comes to dealing with a serious health issue? In September, a total of 87 organizations experienced with dealing with addiction signed a letter to the Minister of Health urging her to not reintroduce this bill. They included a number of Edmonton organizations who assist the homeless, HIV-infected persons, and addicted persons. They include the Boyle Street Community Services, the Bissell Centre, the George Spady Centre, and Streetworks. Their common request to the Minister is for support for increased access to supervised consumption sites similar to the Insight program in Vancouver and those in other nations including Switzerland, Germany and Netherlands in order that lives can be saved. These dedicated and highly respected community organizations point out supervised consumption sites have been proven to decrease overdose death and injury, to decrease risk behaviors associated with HIV and hepatitis C infection, to increase access to health care for marginalized people, to save health care costs, and to decrease open drug use and publicly discarded drug use equipment. Which is, by the way, one of the issues that communities usually raise. I urge, Mr. Speaker, that the Minister respond to their request to sit down with them to learn from their direct experience in dealing on a daily basis with people battling addictions and seek effective solutions to both assist those addicted and increase public safety. There are obvious medical, social, and psychological costs associated with a single HIV infection. If nothing else, one can appreciate the cost savings derived from preventing HIV infection. Directly because of the introduction of a needle exchange program in Edmonton, reduced rates of infection among drug, drug addicts has been reported for both HIV AIDS and hepatitis C, while in the same per period uh, rates have increased in other high-risk areas. If we're truly serious about tackling the issue of drug addiction and the attendant health risks to the entire Canadian population, as parliamentarians, we have an obligation to base our decisions on appropriate programs or regulatory responses on sound science and research results. Surely this should be the basis for all good public policy. As the Canadian HIV AIDS Legal Network concluded from a detailed study, in quotes, many of the arguments against are ill-conceived and overstated and are outweighed by the likely benefits of safe injection facilities." End of quotes. They report that there is an ethical imperative to at least trial facilities given the unacceptable harms currently experienced by drug users and the general community and the potential for these sites to eliminate or reduce at least some of the harms. They advise that a refusal to establish these critical sites may be deemed to violate human rights obligations under international law or potentially subject governments to negligent suits. It's important to, it's important to observe what they're advising us. It's important to observe and respect as well the unanimous ruling of the Supreme Court of Canada in favor of the continued operation of the insight and right of access to similar facilities. And if I could quote the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court in that unanimous decision, she stated, whereas here the evidence indicates that a supervised injection site will decrease the risk of death and disease, and there is little or no evidence that it will have a negative impact on public safety, the Minister should generally grant an exemption. In closing, Mr. Speaker, by shutting their eyes to the evidence and seeking to put as many barriers in the way of communities opening their safe consumption sites, the government is risking the lives and health of Canadians. Let's not forget that if it, if it weren't for the Supreme Court, Insight itself would have been closed. I urge the Minister of Health to withdraw this bill and begin a serious consultation on how we can decrease addiction to legal drugs in Canada and the attendant health and social costs. Thank you. Questions and comments? Kestjoe Kamantai, the Honourable Member for Kootenai, Columbia. Mr. Speaker, and I uh, listened to the member opposite uh, quite intently, and there was a couple things that popped out during her uh, statement, and uh, one of them was that uh, uh, with regards to uh, those that are under the use of uh, heroin. As she said, uh, with regards to uh, 
the uh, tree, or, or the uh, insight, in, insight in, in specific, when they are ready to get off the drug. Most of the most of heroin uh, users that I have been around in my former life, most of them are dead scared to get off of that drug because of what happens the next 72 hours when they're trying to get off that drug. The other thing is that what she mentioned in her statement that I didn't hear was there has not been a decrease in the use of heroin. There may be a lot of things that Insight does, but one thing it doesn't do is decrease the amount of heroin used, not only in Vancouver, but across Canada. So I wonder if the uh, member could speak to that with regards to the decrease of heroin and how these sites would try to do that. The Honourable Member for Edmonton, Strathcona. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'd like to thank the Honourable Member for his questions. I enjoyed the time that I spent on a previous committee with him. Uh, two very uh, interesting points. Uh, the first one, absolutely. Uh, people who are addicted to serious drugs are terrified to stop that addiction. They are addicted. That is exactly what it means. And the more serious the drug, the more serious the addiction. That is precisely why the medical specialists, including Dr. Houston, who's a very highly recognized doctor in Alberta, is saying this is why we need the safe injection sites. If they're lying on, the, on a back alley taking that drug, there's nobody there saying to them, we can actually help you get off this drug. We can refer you to a treatment center. There's simply somebody in that back alley sa saying, I can give you another hit next week. Um, on the other matter, I don't believe that I said that, I, that these injection sites have reduced the use of drugs. What I've said is it's reduced the incidence of related diseases. Questions and comments? Question and comments. Honorable Deputy de Rosemont Laptit. The Honorable Member for Rosemont Laptit Patrie. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank the member for Edmonton Strathcona for her excellent speech. Well documented, with quotes, backed up with evidence, and clear demonstrations of the benefits that these uh, supervised inject injection sites represent. Now, they don't necessarily reduce the number of drug addicts, but it's been proven that they will reduce the number of people who die because of their addiction. Now, it's interesting, it was interesting to listen to the member talk about people who are shooting up in back alleys. Now, I'm a father, and I'm concerned about uh, the fact that uh, my children go to a park, they end up in alleys. I live in a neighborhood where they go and play in the parks and in the alleys, and if they stumble across uh, an infected syringe, it could make them very sick, dangerously sick. Supervised injection sites are such that there are fewer and fewer infected needles that might fall into the hands of children. So I don't understand why the Conservatives, who need to be concerned about our children playing in parks and alleys, aren't more aware of that reality. And I'd like to hear my colleagues' comments on that. Edmonton, Strathcona. Uh, the comment and the question from uh, my colleague. Um, I am, I am convinced that the Honourable Member is a good father and wants to protect his children. And I'm convinced that any other member in this place who has children or grandchildren want to do the best to protect their children from both becoming addicted and coming into uh, contact with people who are addicted and might become uh, HIV contaminated or into needles. I myself, in my residence here in Ottawa, have found uh, needles in my garden. Deeply troubling. I mean, this is exactly why we need to set up these safe injection sites. And so there's not a possibility that anyone in our community can come in touch with contaminated items. But there's also the chance that uh, any of our, our family members, our children, could end up becoming infected with hepatitis C or HIV because we do not have those who are using drugs. We remember, it's not people simply lying in alleys that are injecting these drugs. Drug users are across society. Everybody needs a place to go that is confidential where they can get assistance. And the drug ins inspection sites clearly from evidence around the world and in Canada are saying this is the best mechanism to reduce disease and to get people off drugs.